all right, for what you need to do in school right now. You need to think like a lawyer all the time. This is one of those things that's really difficult to explain what I mean. The best sort of way I can bring it to your attention is if you've seen the movie My Cousin Vinny, he has these kind of made up fights with his girlfriend, fiance, whatever in the movie. They just pick fights with each other and that ends up helping him at the end of the movie. Learn from that. Okay, my very first day of law school, teacher pulled me down the front, he put a yellow M&M in front of me. He put a red M&M in front of the girl next to me. He says, now I want you to both argue why your M&M is the only M&M that people should eat. I was like, this is the stupidest thing I've ever done. I'm arguing about a yellow M&M. But I realized his point, which is you just need to start thinking like a lawyer. You need to scrutinize everything. You need to be observant of what's going on. You need to think about all the little nuances. I mean, I go into a grocery store. My wife won't go with me anymore because I go into a grocery store and I could be in there for hours just looking at the cereal boxes going, oh honey, look, look at this, you know, this generic brand is so similar to the Kellogg's and you know, look at these trade dress issues and she's just like, just shut up, just pick a cereal. You wanna take classes that you know you're gonna rock out on, okay? This is important for the GPA, all right? Now I'm not gonna advocate this across the board, but it is important that you play to your strengths. If you know you suck at patents, don't be taking 10 patent classes if you're not gonna be a patent lawyer. You know, take the classes that you think you're going to do well on that you're going to be able to show your expertise in and be able to convey that to potential employers. You want to take classes that are complementary to each other. I just talked to someone today who was saying they're taking trademark law, the theory class, and they're taking the trademark practices class at the same time. Brilliant strategy. Take them at the same time. There's going to be overlap, and you're going to understand both of them better by doing them both at the same time. If you can ever do that, you absolutely should. You know, so I'm, I'm, I'm kind of down on theory, but there's an exception to that, all right? The one time I think it's important for you to take a theory class is if it's outside of your core area that you want to practice. So for me, my biggest mistake, learn from me please, is I didn't take a patent class here. And I fought with Tennessee about it. I don't know if he's still in here, but I fought with him about it. He was like, take patents, take patents. I was like, no, it'll screw my GPA. I don't want to take patents and I hate it and I don't understand it. And he told me to take it and I didn't. And you know what? This is a Rawlings Cool Flow helmet. Under Armour's been sued for patent infringement and also trade dress infringement, okay, on this helmet. I don't know patent law. I'm worthless, okay? I wish I had some conversancy in patent law and now I'm sitting on the ski list and I'm reading patent books, okay, because I gotta teach myself because I didn't do it back when I was here. I'm in an interview with these two guys from Paul Frank and Collins and they're sitting there and they're reading my resume back to me and they're, you know, whoa, I see you did this and you did that and what do you think about this and what do you think about that? And I kind of looked at him with this sort of look of like, what is this foreign document? And I asked him if I could see it and the guy handed it to me and I crumpled it up right in his face and I threw it over his head. Luckily it went into the trash can and I made it. I'm terrible at basketball so that was a little miracle in itself. And I said, you know, look, with all due respect, I know there's people that are interviewing for this job that have better grades, they've done more stuff than I have, and you know, they, on paper they're gonna look more qualified. And in place of that, I took this book out and I laid it down in front of me. I said, guys, I've read this twice, cover to cover, let's talk about it. What do you wanna know? Because what I'm saying to you is, these other students, they might have gotten a good GPA or good this or good that, but when I come in there my first week, I know how to file a trademark application. I know how to file a response to office action. I know how to do a letter of protest. I know all the procedures, and I know all the little nuances just based on studying this thing. I don't know, these guys might have just been so shocked that I had the, the nerve to try this little move on them. They hired me. I mean, you know, and it was like, it wasn't because I was smart. It was just because I was passionate and I was confident. And, you know, I came here to legitimize myself as a trademark expert. That was my goal in coming here. And if anyone ever tells you not to do the LLM program, they say it's not worth it, well, I'm living proof that it is worth it. Because I went from $50,000 a year to one twenty-five dollars at Dwayne Morris just from coming here for a year. So it has totally relaunched my career in a different direction and a much better one for me personally. I had done an analysis of Under Armour's entire trademark portfolio. I'd spent about maybe four or five hours on the internet looking for cyber squatters, just pulling in different misspelled variations of underarmor.com. And finally, I found this one just great one. I was so psyched. I mean, I did a little jig in my, in my room when I found it. I found underarmor.com, but with two R's at the end of the word under. And when you went to that website, it, was this, it took you this, this website called Cocky Gear. 
and it was this guy selling knockoff Under Armour sports gear. And so I go down to my interview, and I've got, like, you know, I bring my suitcase with all my library with me, or at least a lot of my library with me to show them all these books I have that I've read. And I've got this other suitcase that's got this entire analysis of their whole trademark portfolio and all these cyber squatters that are out there. And so I'm sitting in the interview, and we're, you know, they're asking about my cyber squatting experience, and I'm like, well, as a matter of fact, and I bust it out and I start showing them. I mean, they're all outraged, like, what? We what didn't know about this website, you know? Oh my God. And they're all pissed, you know, but they're happy with me. They're just pissed about the website. But what they told me made me stand out was, was that, that I showed that I was really interested in the brand. You were gonna be in one of two most likely positions in your career. You were either gonna be a big fish in a little pond, okay, this would be Under Armour where there's not a lot of lawyers and you are the go-to person, or you're going to be a minnow in the sea. All right, you need to know and be very aware of which of those two things you are in, and that's gotta dictate. If you are a minnow in the sea, do not be different. Be like the other minnows. You know, what happens to the minnow that's in the sea that like ventures off by himself? The shark gets him, right? You need to go with the herd, okay? This is why I do not work in a law firm. I mean, you know, if you've seen me for a while now, you could probably tell I'm a little different. Um, and this doesn't jive well in big law firms. And, you know, if you're the kind of person that can go along with the herd, you very well will do well in a big law firm. That was not for me, and, and it did not work out for me. Let's get into companies like, like Under Armour. They want the quality work. They want you to take initiative kind of in a different way they want you to be cost conscious. Now that's not the situation at Under Armour because of how well Under Armour is done, but as a general comment, they want you to be cost conscious. And then you need to understand the industry. That's really important. If you're gonna to try to work for a company, you better know. You know, we asked the questions today with some of the people we interviewed, you know, why Under Armour? You know, what, what do you know about apparel and footwear and our competitors? You know. That's going to be really, really important is to, to show that you have that understanding. So I spent a lot of time, not, when I interviewed Under Armour, I was aware of not just Under Armour's portfolio, but I looked at Nike's, I looked at Reeboks, I looked at Adidas, and a few other brands.